I was just getting ready to leave for work and I noticed something pretty big. In this incubator, this is the only egg that's in here. We've got a little Bell's Hengeback hatching. It's only just started to pit. So hopefully you guys can see this right here. You see these little pieces of shell and it's actually pulsating a little bit because that's the baby's face right behind that broken shell that's breathing. So he's taking his, his or her very first breath of air right now. So we're gonna put it back and uh, let it hatch on its own and hopefully we have a healthy baby. Oh wow. Is he out? He's not fully out. Look at that. We got an arm. So this is day two, and the tortoise is slowly but surely pushing its way out of the egg. You can see his little face there, and the arm, and part of the shell. And he'll probably be fully out by tonight. So here we go. This is day four. This baby should be ready to come out of the incubator now so that we can get it hydrated and get ready to start life. I did want to point out real quick that um, this egg has been incubating since November. That's right, November 2021. So here we are. It's now July in two days. It's June 29th and uh, 2022 and this baby is finally here. So it's been a long wait. Um, Temperatures fluctuated a little bit, but it's hung around 89 degrees with anywhere between 70 and 85% humidity. Um, so anybody that may have luck, maybe these uh, levels will help you out a little bit. So let's see where we're at. So as suspected, the baby has fully left the egg, so it's time for us to intervene. Okay, so here's the little nugget and here's the egg that it emerged out of. Now, I don't know if you can see the date, but it says right there, 1128. November 28th was the day that this egg was laid. And there were actually three others. This turned out to be the only one that was fertile. So um, we're gonna get this tortoise its first drink and uh, talk a little bit about it. All right, so this little tortoise is thoroughly enjoying its very first drink. And it's gonna actually help it to straighten out because in the shell, these things are folded in half almost and they kind of come out misshapen looking, but usually they start to swell out and getting some water in them is gonna help them get to that point. The reason that this is a big deal is because this is the first known hatching in the United States of America of a true Bell's Hingeback tortoise, Conixus belliana. So how do we know that this is the very first time that this has happened in the United States? Well, credible sources have confirmed that over the course of time, as the hingeback tortoises, which are comprised of several different species, have been imported into our country and other countries from their native land of Africa, there was never actually true Conixus belliana, which is the Bell's hingeback tortoise, imported here that we know of. For years and years, people were breeding what they thought was the Bell's hingeback, and they were even calling it the Western Bell's hingeback. That animal, which was originally taxonomically called Conixus belliana nagui, has now been promoted to full species rank like the other hingebacks, and it's Conixus nagui. It is not belliana whatsoever, it is not a bell's hingeback. All those years, people thought that they were breeding this, but they were breeding nagui. And the one main trait, because we're not gonna go nuts here about identifying hingeback tortoises, is that the nagui, the western hingeback, has four claws on the feet as opposed to five, which is what true Belliana have. There are some other differences as well, but you can use the Conixus Cooperative web pages and social media handles to really get a handle on just how to identify these animals properly. So to sum it up, for a long, long time, people thought that they were reproducing true Bell's hingeback tortoises, but they actually were not. Now, I don't know how that goes in other countries, but at least here in the United States, most sources have confirmed that, and there are no known captive bred, which means born in captivity, true Bell's hingeback tortoises at all. 
this is supposedly the very first time that this has occurred. That's why this is such a big deal. Now, if you know different out there, please feel free to let us know in the comments. This is not a competition. The more true captive bred actual Belliana out there is a huge deal, and everybody involved in trying to preserve these animals in their purest form would love to know if there are more out there. So, if true Bell's Hingebacks have never been in the USA, then how did this happen? Well, in recent years, it finally did happen. There are a lot of legalities involved, and like a lot of tortoises that are ripped out of the wild, they get sent over here in droves. Well, we ended up with a group that someone did not want to care for anymore, and for some reason, they thrived. For the vast majority of people that were trying to keep these poor things alive, it was just failure after failure. The animals were dying from unknown causes, weird diseases, viral infections, the whole thing. It was just a complete mess. And everyone thought that the same thing was going to happen to the small group of adults that we ended up with. Well, there's nothing special about us folks. And I will try to go over a couple reasons why I think they may have survived, but the adults did survive. And one female laid three eggs in November. So they got so comfortable and so adjusted to life here that they ended up really doing well and actually reproducing. There was so much breeding going on. It was like every time we turned around, the males were breeding the females and they were thriving as a group. And what we did was we gave them a dry season indoors. We kept them very dry for the winter. And then come spring, we moved them outside into a very big, well-planted pen where there was an area that would pool. And let me tell you, we do a lot with box turtles. If you follow our channel and you follow any of our pages, you know that we do a lot with box turtles. Well, these things were no different than box turtles when it came to rain. When the skies would open up, the tortoises would come out. They would walk tall, they would take full advantage of the rain, they would wade in the puddles, drink profusely, breed, eat even more than they usually were, and it really seemed to be some kind of trigger. So if you're trying to work with these animals, maybe that's a takeaway for you if you can't give them actual rain, maybe try to simulate it. Uh, the wet and then dry season may help too. You know, African species of tortoises go through different kinds of periods during their active season and even dormant seasons than say a testudo would like a Hermans or a Russian or a Greek tortoise, for example. So between the wet and dry seasons we provide them with, the amount of food we were giving them, they were eating Missouri tortoise diet, various greens, mushrooms, they did not seem to like too much protein and go after earthworms like a new gooey I would or some of the other hingebacks. And just basically being hands off with them, we would rarely handle them and just let them do their thing. When we brought them back inside last fall, they laid eggs. And so this little one who we've decided to name Jabari, which in Swahili means brave one, is here. And even though it could have had two other siblings, those other eggs just turned out to be infertile. So, hey, this is one big leap for this species. And um, I know a lot of people are excited about it. We are over the moon about it. We're also very tired. Again, this thing has been incubating since November. So now it's time to start planning this little tortoise's future. So what is the Bell's Hengeback, Conixus belliana? Well, it's a medium-sized tortoise that comes from Central Africa and it develops a hinge on the carapace and not on the plastron like a box turtle would. It's gonna get that hinge right back here. It's much easier to see in adults. Right now there's really not much going on and this tortoise still has to kind of unfold a little bit. It's still kind of wacky shaped. So for now, while Jabari is straightening out and just really kind of start getting his footing or her footing, we're going to keep the animal inside an incubator in that green container on clean, moist paper towels and probably within a week to 10 days, the tortoise will start eating its first meals. Right now, it's just fully absorbed its yolk sac, and if you know anything about hatching turtles and tortoises, they basically live off that yolk sac that they've absorbed through their belly button for the first few days to week or so of life. Once he or she is ready to start eating, we're gonna offer that appropriate diet, uh, a nice mixture of greens, mushrooms, Missouri diet, all kinds of things that hingebacks should eat including some multivitamin and calcium to start getting some size because as you can see Jabari is very very tiny right now. One of the most important things right off the bat is going to be that precious moisture and humidity like all baby tortoises require. When tortoises are this young they know they're vulnerable so they stay hidden and they're forcing themselves into a precious humid microclimate 
sometimes 90% of the time or more. And that's where they start to absorb all that beneficial moisture in the air and in the substrate. And of course they drink a lot and that helps them to grow smoothly and of course properly. So we have to make sure we can offer Jabari pretty much a constant supply of that so that we can get Jabari out of this fragile stage not too quickly, because you don't want to rush the growth of tortoises, but we of course want to see him or her start to put on growth, and also color is going to come in. Right now Jabari is just this beautiful caramel color, almost like kind of solid colored. But as he or she ages, the shell will darken to either a dark brown or black, and eventually beautiful striations or blotches of yellow or white will form on the shell. And uh, some of these Bell's Hingebacks are absolutely breathtaking when you, uh, when you look at them. Jabari's mother and father are absolutely stunning examples of the species. And uh, kind of like pancake tortoises, no two are the same. And when they're in their natural habitat, you almost don't notice them at all. But when you put them out in a plain background, they are as conspicuous as it gets. So on top of all the appropriate housing and feeding and hydration for Jabari, one other thing is biosecurity. So you probably notice if you watch our videos frequently, we're not in our yard and we're not in our nature room. We are in our house. We don't house any other reptiles in this house. The only animals in here are our dogs and we are going to keep Jabari in the house so that he or she is fully biosecure. We have a lot of animals in our nature room. They are all healthy, but you never know. And because this animal is the first of its kind in the United States to be born, we want to make sure that everything goes smoothly and that we get Jabari out of this super fragile stage. Because even though Jabari is here, is fully formed, and is appearing to be a healthy tortoise, we have absolutely no idea what the next few days, weeks, months, or even year is going to be like. Hopefully everything goes well. And of course we're going to keep you guys updated. There'll be plenty of posts about Jabari on our social media platforms and we will do follow-ups in our YouTube videos. Don't forget that we're posting Thursdays and Sundays now. And folks, if you really want to learn a lot about the Conixus genus and hingeback tortoises, make sure you visit the Conixus Cooperative and all the work that they're doing to keep these animals fully pure and preserved and around for a long time because this isn't a genus of tortoises that's getting a lot of attention as, as other species like radiated tortoises and Herman's tortoises and box turtles. They are kind of a ghost to an extent, but they are every bit deserving of all the attention that all the other species get. And let me tell you, this is something that's really special. Again, Jabari is the first known United States of America hatching of a Conixus belliana, true Bell's hingeback tortoise. And again, if you know anything different, and you know there are more out there, we want to know, and so does everybody else involved with this amazing group of tortoises. Mm -hmm.